I want a travel guitar. Obviously you can travel with an acoustic guitar, but more specifically I want an electric travel guitar. But I don't want something that looks totally ridiculous. Um, like I don't want uh, tuners coming out of the front of the body or something. Um, I want two pickups, a volume and a tone and a three-way switch, because that's what I'm used to. Um, but I want it to feel like my high-end guitars. But I also don't want to spend a ton of money on it. Also, because I'm a stickler, I want it to look, you know, unique and attractive. Like, you know, not weird, just look like a guitar. That's not too much to ask, right? I'm sure I can buy something like that. Five hours later. No, it turns out I can't buy something like that. So I guess I'll just have to sort of make one. Let's get started on that. Here we have the Squire Mini Jazzmaster. Very normal looking headstock. Also has a very normal looking body. It's just smaller. Important to me, one volume, one tone, and a three-way toggle with two pickups. So immediately, one of the things keeping this from being feeling high-end is these fret edges. Uh, you can see they're catching on the cloth here, so I'm going to have to address that, definitely. We'll go ahead and remove the strings so we can take the guitar apart. And this is a top loader bridge, uh, so everything has got to come out the back like this. So you do have to keep that in mind when you're uh, loading strings in later. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the plastic from the neck here, um, just to be able to get to everything easier. Removing the string trees. All right, and now we're taking our tuners off. So these don't have screws in the back. They're held in place by pins. So I just have to undo the uh, nuts and washers and they'll come right out. So you can see if I pull them out there, there's two holes for the pins. Um, this ends up becoming a little bit of an issue later, but we'll get to that. All right, and now where I removed the neck, uh, there's some little wood kind of chip breakthrough from those screw holes being done kind of forcefully, I guess. So uh, I'm just scraping the excess off with a razor blade. And then after I do that, I'm just going back with a little nail file um, just to kind of sand and flatten that surface a little bit so it mates nicely when I get done. But this is also just so that stuff doesn't get in the way of finishing the neck because I'm going to spray some finish on it. All right, so the frets are protruding a good bit. So the first thing I'm doing is putting a little chamfered edge on them so that they kind of fall off nicely. So I'm gonna do that on both sides so that they have a nice kind of about a 45 degree angle of falling off at the end. Now I'm going back uh, to get the edges of the frets, the uh, kind of final sharp edge part. I'm getting that with just a regular fret file and I'm holding it parallel so that it's only touching those edges of the frets. I'm doing this very gently and carefully so that I don't scar up the neck or the tops of the frets or anything. And now I'm just going back over with some uh, green Scotch-Brite just to uh, kind of clean everything up and also prepare again the neck for some gloss finish, which I'm going to spray here in shortly. I'm not going to show you that because the last time I tried to videotape myself painting, uh, the paint blew through the wind like 40 feet away and got on my camera lens. It was really annoying, so I'm not going to do that. But I am going to spray gloss finish on this cheap paint like Walmart Rust-Oleum American Accents clear coat. That's what I'm going to use. And I'm gonna do like uh, three coats all in one day, and that's it. Okay, you can see uh, I'm also preparing for finish here. Now that I've done that, I'm just cleaning it with some alcohol, some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. It's just to make sure I get all the dust off, um, just to get it nice and clean before I go spray it. Now we're taking the body apart. This is uh, just a regular five screw hardtail type bridge. So just gonna remove all those screws and the bridge will come right off. Easy peasy. Yeah, and you can see that's the bridge ground coming through the top there. Now we're gonna remove the pit guard and kind of see what it looks like up underneath here. Um, I'm not totally sure. 
So we'll, we'll pull all this out and then we'll see what our pickup route cavity looks like and what all the electronics and everything looks like. And fortunately we've got a nice pretty big kind of swimming pool type route so that gives us a lot of options to work with. And I'm going to undo this uh, ground wire here because I find it superfluous since it's grounded to the bridge anyway. Um, so I just don't see any need to have that there as well. Now I'm removing the pickups from the pit guard. I am going to use this pit guard, um, but I'm going to do some stuff to it. Um, and then I'm also going to put new pots in it. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove everything from the pit guard and deal with it separately. Uh, these pots are totally like usable fine. Um, I just don't think they have quite as nice a taper as something like uh, American sort of CTS type pots. So I'm going to use those. Uh, peeling the plastic off the pit guard um, because I'm going to do some things. I'm going to put some stuff on the pit guard. I'm going to use contact paper. Um, and this one actually had uh, two bits of plastic on it. So now here's where the first like kind of thing I ran into where I didn't think about it immediately. So I have these pickups. These are uh, Planetone covered pickups. Um, but these are routed for non-covered. So I had to use a router with that template to expand the holes. So I've done that now at this point. And now what I'm doing is scuffing up the pit guard really good, kind of taking it down to a matte finish. And this is because I really want the adhesive and the contact paper to bond really strongly to the pit guard so that it won't come up on the edges. So here's the uh, beautiful Heather recommended Pioneer Woman contact paper. <laughs> I think it looks really nice and it works really well. So I've done this before. I did this on my PRS bell and I think it came out really good. So uh, I'm just kind of roughly cutting it to size here. And again, you know, I'm going to cut this down to the exact size of the pit guard with a razor blade. So I just need to get the perimeter so that everything fits in. I'm using 3M spray adhesive from I don't know when. That's probably 15 years old, <laughs> but it works. Uh, so I'm just spraying some a light coat down um, on the pit guard. The tin foil is just to keep from getting stuff on my bench. That's not you getting used for shielding or anything. So now this contact paper does have adhesive on the back of it, but. I did it once before with a pit guard without using any other extra adhesive and to me it doesn't seem strong enough to really stay that way on something weird shaped like in the small corners and things. So uh, I went ahead and sprayed it with adhesive as well which I know that stuff is really strong because I've used it before. Uh, and now I'm just going to use some decal rollers to just you know kind of make sure all the air bubbles are out. This actually went on beautifully. I didn't have like any trouble with this at all so that, that was very helpful. Um, and again, I'm just using some kind of window decal kind of smoothing stuff just to make sure the edges are good and attached. And then I'll come, <coughs> excuse me, then I'll come back and cut everything out. Uh, and then um, I will go back very finely with a razor blade, like you can see here. Um, I've done kind of a rough cut around the perimeter. So now I'm going to cut out the pickups um, and then I'll have to go around and cut out the holes for the pots and the switches. And then the toughest part, I think, is kind of following the contour around the outline so that I'm cutting it off on the bevel, which you can see I'm doing here. So what that's going to do is kind of generate like a border around the picture, um, which I think looks really nice and it just just feels better to me. So um, this just takes a little time and patience and a really good sharp razor blade. And you got, you got to have some technique because you don't want to dig into your pick guard or anything. But uh, when it's all said and done, this ends up looking really nice. So we've skipped ahead a bit here. I've gone ahead and put uh, everything in. You can see I've used full-size CTS pots, and I'm using these Planet Tone uh, MHS-3 pickups, which are Alnico 3 humbuckers that sound terrific. So I put those in here. I'm using the original switch and jack because I didn't see any reason not to, but the pots I wanted to change. So I'm just, uh, I start by wiring up all my grounds. Um, that's just how I like to do things. Just go ahead and, so I can very clearly see that there's no ground loops or anything. I prefer to do it that way. So I'm, I'm wiring all my grounds. I'm using green for, wiring code color here for ground uh, and the red is going to be hot so anywhere the signal is flowing that's going to be red wire so you can see I'm running uh, the hot connection from it looks like the pot to probably the jack here um, and that is just basic wiring I'm not doing anything crazy this is just uh, one volume one tone and a three-way toggle there's no fancy switching or anything going on here the only thing you might consider fancy is that I do add a treble bleed circuit and I wired it uh, what they call 50 style so you can you can google that if you want to find out what it is but it's nothing crazy uh, 
All right, and now I'm just test fitting to make sure everything works right, and I don't need to kind of you know move some wires around or bend something to make it fit. And I, I really didn't have any problem with that; it dropped right in. And you can see I've got a big long ground wire sticking out there, so I uh, pulled that back and cut it to just the right size so that it's folded in the exact same place that the original one was. And now I'm putting the bridge back down, and I'm going to change those bridge saddles, but I just wanted to go ahead and get the bridge locked down first on that wire, and then we'll move to the bridge saddles. And now I'm just, uh, you know, making sure the pickups are secured in there. And then I'm going to, of course, you know, reattach the pick guard itself so that it stays put while I'm messing with the rest of the guitar. Now I'm removing the original saddles. Um, again, nothing like wrong with these saddles, but I wanted to kind of just make the guitar feel and sound a little nicer. And these little touches you can do, like saddles, changing the material of saddles can make a big difference. So um, what I'm putting in here are Graftech Tusk saddles, which I have never used before. Um, so, I, and I think they look really nice. The white saddle look on this particular guitar, I think looks kind of cool. So we're giving these a try. And I ended up finding them very comfortable and I think they do something for the sound of the guitar as well. And uh, while we're assembling stuff here, I'm going to go ahead and put on these beautiful kind of maple wooden knobs, um, which I think just accent the pit guard and everything beautifully. It just makes it look like a really nice high end, you know, guitar, even though it's a very inexpensive guitar. Um, Heather picked those out as well. And uh, I'm pretty much done with the body at this point, other than I'll have to make some adjustments for intonation when we do the setup. But So I'm just giving it a good wipe down to make sure there's no residue or anything on it anywhere. And you see a nice sexy pan out here. Um, so far, we're uh, doing pretty well. Uh, we've got a couple days to spare and we're doing all right. All right, so now this is where it gets tricky. <laughs> so uh, I have done the clear coat on this neck, and so now to make it really shine and be smooth, I've got to wet sand it. And so I'm gonna go through all these different grits of wet sanding. You can see my stack of micro mesh pads over there, and I go through, I don't know, eight or 10 of them or something to bring it up to a really high sheen. Uh, <clears throat> and that is time consuming and uh, delicate. And so <laughs> just just know that if you want it to look like this, it takes a really long time if you don't have like a, you know, a buffing machine or something. Because that's the next thing I'm gonna do is after I get this all wet sanded and cleaned up and wiped down, um, and also be aware that you don't want too much water in areas where there's unprotected wood because it will swell and mess with your finish, which I had at least one problem with. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, and then we're gonna move to the uh, buffing now. I'm just using Meguiar's buffing compound. I use buffing, then polish, and then the wax just to make it look nice and shiny. And I've done this whole one here by hand. Um, I have some buffing tools. I don't have a buffing wheel, but I do have some buffing tools. But for such a small thing, I just found it easier to do it by hand. Um, it's still kind of time consuming, but you know, it's, it's not too bad. But uh, when this is all said and done, um, have, you know, I, I had to because this is a maple neck. I had to do the fingerboard as well. Uh, it it ends up looking pretty good. It's it's not as good as nitro or something. But uh, here I'm using the fret kisser, and that is a not. It's basically a, a fret rocker with a, a file in the middle of all the sides so that you can get the frets level. Um, so I took down the real high spots with the fret kisser. You can see I've kind of marked them on the tape there, and now I'm blacking out the tops again because now that I've done the real high spots. I'm going to take my leveling beam and level the entire fret plane, all the frets at once. Um, and because this is a short scale neck, this, uh, this fret beam actually covers all of the frets with one swipe, which is really nice. So you're gonna get a good accurate level here. Uh, and I'm just using uh, 220 grit sandpaper, stick, <coughs> excuse me, stick them sandpaper on the back. And after that's done, um, just brushing the stuff off here. I don't think I got it on camera, but basically you just have to crown and polish the frets, um, which I have a great file for, and then some polishing stuff. So this is where we ran into a little trouble. You can see I'm filling these holes with super glue and toothpicks because the fender locking tuners that I got have two pins like that, but they're actually uh, farther away than on this neck. It's, it, I was a little surprised, so I had to fill and redrill the holes. But uh, I've, I've done that and I've put the new tuners on, so now I'm putting the neck of the guitar back together. And uh, basically the only thing at this point to do is, uh, since I tested the electronics and everything before I put it all back together, the only thing I need to do now is just basically restring the guitar. And, uh, oh, and I, I, I forgot about this. I used uh, Tusk saddles, Graftech Tusk uh, string trees. Um, so uh, the saddles and the string trees are both Tusk, which is pretty cool. All right, here we go. This is the... Uh, 
Squire Mini Jazzmaster travel guitar. Yeah, let's just um, we'll play through a little bit and you can just kind of hear what it sounds like. So here's kind of a cleanish sound with some uh, compression and delay. <laughs> So obviously the biggest part of the sound is, is the pickups and the amp model here. I mean like this is, it is still a kind of a cheapish guitar, but it resonates pretty nice actually, I'm surprised. Um, like when I hit a chord, I mean, you know, I can feel it all the way from the bottom all the way up to the top of the headstock resonating. There's no dead spots or anything, which is great. Um, here's a little like mid gainy type ACDC level of distortion. Which I think that sounds good too. Um, I'll put it on kind of like a, a sort of more singing lead tone and you hear what that sounds like. I mean, that doesn't suck for a yeah, $180 guitar. <laughs> But I know, because I've said it before, I know you're wondering, will it do the Chugga Chuggas? I don't know, I guess we'll have to find out.
I mean, yeah, it's not like the greatest thing in the world, but also keep in mind that I have these amp sounds dialed in for like my full size guitars and like different pickups with different magnets and stuff. So like just plug straight in, like that's not bad at all, I don't think. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments, I'm curious. And uh, let me know if you've ever done anything like this or if you're now you're inspired and you're gonna go do something like it yourself. So till next time, catch you later.